Hello and welcome to the weekly roundup. I'm Rick. I'm Nikki. And this is the video where we round up the latest theme park news and share it with you guys. Plus, at the end, I will answer some viewer questions. Let's get to it. started off with Universal. We've been getting a lot of questions about what's happening with Universal's plans for New Year's Eve. Yes, we have. And earlier this week, Universal sent out a press release outlining the uh, New Year's Eve experiences that are available to visitors at Universal City Walk and if you want to visit uh, Universal Orlando Hotels on December 31st. Concerning City Walk, special prefix menus and dinner entrees will be available from Anahitos, Big Fire, Bob Marley's, Cowfish, Margaritaville, NBC Sports Grill, Pat O'Brien's Twosomes, and Vivo Italian Kitchen. And then for the hotels of the Hard Rock, Port Afino Bay, Royal Pacific, Cabana Bay, Endless Summer Surfside, and Endless Summer Dockside. And you don't have to be staying in the hotels to make a reservation to experience the New Year's Eve dining experiences at their hotels. I'll leave links with all the details, but just as one example, the cost at the Hard Rock would be $59 per person. But go check out the link and see the full menus. Yeah. Now here's something I've mentioned previously in one of my theme park videos, but I'll mention it again one last time. <laughs> Endless Summer Dockside is now open to the public. Mm -hmm. Now, before the shutdowns, I was invited out by Universal to tour the resort. And right up here, this info card, that's going to be a link to that video. Plus, in the description box, I'll put another link for you guys. Go check it out. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like Surfside. Right. Other than the theme is a little different because it's your dockside. Well, and the I think the lobby area is really cool with mm -hmm. the driftwood and everything. Yeah. You, you guys got to check it out. It actually is pretty cool. Sticking with Universal Orlando News. Recently, they have been testing some of those contactless security scanners. Which is awesome. That's the kind. Right now, we have to go put, you know, take stuff out of our pockets, put it in the bins. It goes through the x-ray machine. This is the kind you just walk through right. with everything in your pockets. And I think maybe randomly or something, they'll, they'll pull you out to look at your bags. Right. And they can, like, get through a ton more people yeah. a lot faster. Yeah. They Is this similar to what they do at, uh, say, the Disney parks, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they pull you out occasionally? Yeah, every so often. Um, or, you know, Is it they have something in your bag or what? Right. So, like, I think I got, you know, pulled out of the line, you know, as I was walking through one time because my eyeglasses case was, like, okay. metal. So, you know, you have to hold, if you have it in your bag, you just hold it up and right. walk through and be like, ah, it's this. Which is what I do. I just have stuff in my pockets and I have my camera. I just hold it up and walk through that thing. Yeah. So, it's neat that Universal is, you know, is testing that out. I know. I'm very excited about that. Hopefully they apply it. <laughs> So we recently stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel, mm -hmm. did a little video on that as well, link popping up right there, <laughs> I'm getting good at that. <laughs> um, but some information I did not provide in that video, one of you viewers let us know that they have changed the location of what is the Rock Royalty Club. Yes. It was on the seventh floor mm -hmm. and they've moved it to the third floor. Right. Keep that in mind if you're staying at the Hard Rock and you really like that uh, Rock Royalty Club. Exactly. It's moved. Exactly. And the, the lobby is on the third floor. Mm -hmm. Don't get in the elevator and push three thinking you're going to go anywhere. <laughs> That's what I did. You're not going to go anywhere. You're, the door's just going to open back up because that just happened to us. <laughs> yeah, we did have... That's what we... We stayed on the third floor. We're a bunch of knuckleheads. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know we were already on the third floor <laughs> at the lobby. No, we were paying attention to it. I mean, you, you just everywhere. drive up and you, you, you walk right into the lobby. Right. Well, you're walking into the third floor. <laughs> you are. So... Yes, I was pressing that three button on the elevator. So don't and, look uh, like ignoramuses <laughs> like us. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. There you go. That Rock Royalty Club has moved. All right, back to the theme parks. It looks like Filch's Emporium has had a little bit of an expansion. A little bit. Yeah, they took out the old lockers mm -hmm. area. Well, they finally finished that uh, Forbidden Journey locker bank outside. And that's a godsend. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it used to be horribly like compact oh, and dark yeah. and so tight crowded, and yeah. oh so now it's open thank that, goodness and that's freed up space to yes, uh, add some merchandise for filches and it looks really cool almost looks cave-like mm -hmm. you yeah. know if you remember where the locker banks were i mean it's kind of dark in there so it's hard to get the detail mm -hmm. but uh looks great now 
So that's a little bit of a bonus. It is. A new locker bank plus more elbow room <laughs> and filches. Exactly. And more merchandise to be able to put out. <laughs> it's awesome. But now back onto the subject of New Year's Eve. That's right. Bush Gardens Tampa is offering two options to celebrate New Year. The first is a play by day, whereas your park reservation is good from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on December 31st. And the second one, probably the more attractive one for New Year's Eve, is the play by night. That's where your reservation is good from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. And it features two firework presentations for guests to choose from. For all the details, visit www.bushgardenstampa.com. Remember in the last weekly roundup when I asked you guys, was Disney adding like digital face masks onto riders on rides not wearing their face masks? Right. The answer from you guys was yes. Mm -hmm. And the answer back then was yes. <laughs> but now the answer is no. Wait, what? Disney actually made a statement on it that they were experimenting with that. And they decided not to continue with that. Oh. But to remind everyone, if you're on a ride, to keep your face mask on. Okay. Now, a better idea from you guys, someone said this in the comments, they should digitally add characters into the empty seats. That's a great idea, just like in football stadiums. And, yeah, wouldn't you that know? be more fun? Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, where you ride right with Goofy. You got Goofy behind you, or beside you. Oh, that... I mean, you always have Goofy beside you. Well, yeah, I do. That's but... me. But maybe Mickey be, <laughs> could be behind you. <laughs> be... Mickey, Ricky, and Mickey. There we go. <laughs> so, Deezerland Park opened to the public this past Monday. Currently, it features go-karts, bowling lanes, arcade games, and such. In the future, it will have a trampoline park, a pinball-specific section, and a James Bond-themed lounge, and an auto experience. Now, the auto experience will take up about 60% of the building space. Though some autos are already on display, and they look pretty cool. Pretty crazy. Yes, Deezerland Park. Mm -hmm. Looks very interesting. For me, for my channel, probably something I would do when I start my Rick's Road Trip series. Fun? Yeah. We'll try that out, I think, in 2021. Cool. Now on to Universal Studios Japan. That's right. I said Japan. <laughs> now, usually when I do these roundups, mm -hmm. I try to keep it local. Right. We live here. You know, the Orlando parks are the ones we visit. Mm -hmm. But sometimes news is so big, I can't skip over it. So big. This one is. Nintendo recently put out a video. It's on YouTube. I'll right. leave a link to it uh, about Super Nintendo World and Universal Japan. Oh, it's awesome. It looks so cool. Oh, I want to go so bad. Oh, my goodness. Now, I, I've been avoiding talking about Epic Universe yep. and Super Nintendo World yeah. because ours is on pause. Right. It's not canceled. It's on pause. So, uh, I just haven't. It makes me sad. I don't, I don't really cover it that much because, you know what? When they start back up construction, then I'll talk more about Super Nintendo World and Epic. Yeah. But I can't go without telling you guys about the video. I'll leave a link to it. It looks so cool. Yeah, it's incredible. It's all in Japanese, um, but it's subtitled. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the land, it's like stepping into a video game. I mean, Super Nintendo the World details are incredible. Is the best idea for a theme park land? Oh, absolutely. I mean, oh my gosh. You, it's perfect for a theme park. Yeah, and how you enter through that, like, what is it, the vortex portal? Oh, yeah, the, the pipe, the, the, the warp pipe. Yeah, oh, I mean, just like every detail was thought of, and then, you know, the interactivity of it all. It looks so, so good. good. Just go check out the video. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So, it does make me a little sad. You know, it's but, coming. Because it's, it's coming. delaying ours. I know, I know ours is delayed, so whenever ours comes, it's going to be later than what we thought. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll go to Japan one day. I have my passport ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and unfortunately, even though I have Nikki with me today, I don't have any rumors, so we will not be able to hear her say, Rumor alert! Rumor alert! Which is too bad. It would have been great to hear her say that. But alas, no rumors, so, the, <laughs> so let's go straight on to the question and answers. We worked it in anyway for you guys. We worked it in. And a reminder, if you would like to submit a question for consideration in one of these videos, visit MyRicksFlix.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the homepage. There'll be a spot there for you to submit a question. Now, I get a lot of questions, 
um, and video suggestions. I can't read all of them. I wish I could. Right. But um, you know, I, Nikki will attest. It's at the last minute I'm putting all this together for the weekly roundup. So I just grab a few questions and run on in here. So Exactly. Um, so don't be offended if your question doesn't get ex- picked. Exactly. It, it has, there's no rhyme or reason. We just grab it, it and go. It's so. just my scattered brainness. Yeah. You know, I'm not very prepared. And I don't plan very well. <laughs> but we're doing the best we can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, on to the questions. Okay. All right. Question number one is from Dustin. Are Universal Express passes worth the cost? I get a lot of questions regarding express passes and that type of uh, are they worth it and stuff. It's hard to say. Right. Because we don't want you to spend money and waste it, you know. The general rule of thumb, if you're coming during a busy time, yeah, you know, anytime like everyone else is on a break, Christmas break is busy, mm-hmm. spring break is busy, summers are busy, Right. Um, I do recommend the express passes. Uh, yeah. If you come to a slow, you know, the, uh, the off season, mm-hmm. you, you might not need them. Right. Get to the park first, make your decision based on wait times and how it's mm-hmm. going, and then, you know, decide to do That's it. That's if you come during what, you know, the downtime. The downtime. The busy time, you pretty much know it's going to be busy at Christmas, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, now, the other thing is the luxury hotels, mm-hmm. you get the express passes with that. Right. And sometimes, now I can't do the math for every scenario out there. Right. But, um, you know, if you get a family of six and you just get a couple hotel rooms, well, everyone in your party is going to get an express pass with that uh, luxury hotel, I should say. Right, exactly. So it might work out better than if you stay at a cheaper place, a cheaper hotel, and then and then buy- you go buy individual uh, express passes. Did I say fast pass earlier? No. I hope not. Okay, good. I don't think so. I won't, I'm always in fear of mixing the terms express passes and uh, fast passes. Boy, I would hear in the comments. Well, and then some of the subscribers have even said that it's more cost effective. Like they've done mm-hmm. the research, they've done the math, and right. that's what they decided to do. And they said it, they were actually got they were ahead by doing that versus by getting the, other way. the luxury hotel room mm-hmm. that has the express passes. Right now, if you don't have any uh, interest in express pass, then maybe that wouldn't work for you. Right. But it seems like most of the time it would work that way. Get the luxury hotel. With, you know what? And even. Because uh, we stayed at the Hard Rock, mm-hmm. and we got our room key as the Express Pass. Right. And then they asked if anyone else was staying. And I was like, well, not staying, but my daughter's going to come visit uh-huh. you know, with, with us. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, well, here's another card key, so she can have Express Pass, too. So, you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it works out during the busy season to get Express Passes. Mm-hmm. Most instances. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, number two. This is from Kev Jones. He wants to know about the water rides at IOA being open in January. Yes, he is visiting. We know Kev Jones. Yes, super Thank positive guy. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for the question, Kev. Yeah. Um, so the water rides at Islands of Adventure, the Jurassic Park River Adventure, mm-hmm. Ripsaw Falls, mm-hmm. and Popeyes and Bluto's Barges. Now, we have notes here. It's Jurassic Park River Adventure will be closed most of January, right? Yeah, the 11th through the 29th. Okay, and then the Popeyes other two is Popeyes and Bluto's barges is February first through the nineteenth mm-hmm. is when it will be closed. So most of February that one will be down. Right, and then um, Ripsaw Falls is February twenty second through March nineteenth. Mm-hmm. So there you go. There, those are the dates of when the water rides will be down. Right. Typically, they do it in the colder season. Right, and it's slightly staggered. I mean, yes, it looks like it, is staggered. it looks like there's some points where there's a couple down at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, um, well, that one's okay. No, no. Oh no, they're all staggered. At You're least, right. Yeah, None from, of them from January what 11th through March 19th. At least two of the three will be available. There you go. Mm-hmm. They're staggered. Yeah. Next question. Okay. Next one is from Bonnie. Can you show what the hotels? they're at Universal are doing for safety protocols. We just stayed at the Hard Rock. Yeah. Um, well, they have the rule of the face mask when you're in the public areas. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Oh, when you come in, you have to... Um, temperature check. Temperature check. Mm-hmm. They have hand sanitizer around. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. I think the major thing is the cleaning of the room. Right. Now, so in, the, in the past, maybe you would want your... your room serviced Mm -hmm. and you're like oh i'm going to go out to dinner during your stay yeah exactly Mm -hmm. i'll be going out to dinner i'll be back in an hour and a half can you do the room no i think they need four hours now right it's more like oh we're going to the park for four hours can you do the room exactly so it's a little longer for that that's the only you know major thing i see other than your face masks and temperature checks yeah 
through all common areas. Yeah. And then when you do your temperature check, you get a wristband so exactly. that you're set mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the day. All right, number five, this is from Robert. Do you ever watch or notice other bloggers when you go out? Uh, we do. We notice some. I mean, we're all in the thing parks about the same time. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny, though. Like, I kind of, I don't know if I have blinders on or I'm just focused on what we're doing. Every so often, I'll see I'll see the ones we know, and I'll be yes. like, hey, how's it going? Now, the ones we like know. That, but, I mean, like, I, it's hard to... The ones we know are the ones who started before us and about the same time as us. Yeah, it's kind of like so, yeah, the same you know, graduation we noticed, class. Yeah. <laughs> we noticed Tim. We noticed uh, Paging Mr. Morrow, Super Enthused, Dev. Yeah. Uh, you know, people like that. I'm not too aware of people who started after us, but I think part of that question was, who do we watch? Okay. And I really don't watch theme park vlogs anymore. Just because <laughs> Here's why. you live, eat, and breathe it all oh, the time. I know. Well, I do three edited uh, vlogs a week from the parks. This one that we do now, and then sometimes a live stream. So that's five in total. And yeah. think about it. When I go film at a park, I'm there for three or four hours. Right. Usually about three. So then I have to come home, relive that. <laughs> yeah. During editing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm constantly in my own theme park videos. Right. So I do have other interests. <laughs> <laughs> so well, most then, of my YouTube is what? Watt culture. Mm -hmm. Watch Mojo. Mm -hmm. um, I love weird history. Mm -hmm. Answers with Joe. I yeah. like that science and history type stuff is what I watch on YouTube. Yeah. I, I watch about the same thing as you with Super Carlin Brothers and things like that. So honestly, we'd like to put a different spin on um, theme park vlogs let's just say mm -hmm. um we want you know so we're pulling from different genres and trying to make it um you know new and fresh is what we're trying to do yeah. at the theme parks so so that's why i do a little different instead of uh just always follow along with me i got rick's top sixes i've got right. verses i got my wikipedias trying to mix in some var uh, variety that way right and then i've got a couple that um i'm working on mm -hmm. too yes so um and i think hopefully um i'll have it nice and edited and everything and up maybe by tuesday Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> but everyone I, that we meet right. is really nice. Yes, exactly. I, I haven't met anybody that's yeah. been always super you know, nice. grumpy or anything. Yeah, everybody's pretty grumpy. I just, um, no, I don't, a lot of times I get you guys leaving comments, I should do a collab with this person or that person. And I really don't do collabs. Why? I, it's just, I don't want people to know how bad I am at this. <laughs> Editing <laughs> saves us. I can't even tell you. Like, if you watch our live streams, ooh. <laughs> I would do a segment. You know, right. like... We're there, and we just happen to be there. Let's do a little segment together. Like with the Potter Collector. Yes, or, Peter, yes. Yeah, or, I'm hopeful know, to do Ohana. something with, with uh, Peter one day. Right. Oh, yeah, Think Park Ohana is another uh, channel that we're aware of and we kind of know. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's right. my take on Think Park vlogging. <laughs> All right, number six is from Courtney and Seth. I have seen pass holders celebrate St. Patrick's Day by going to Finnegan's, mm -hmm. but are they uh, are there any other fun St. Patrick's Day things that we should check out? Finnegan's is really busy at Universal Orlando. Yeah. On St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. um, for Disney, what is it? What's that place? Is it Raglan? Yeah, Raglan Road. Yeah, that's yeah. busy over there. Busy at Disney Springs. Yes. But back at Universal, I would say Pat O'Brien's. Yes, mm -hmm. that's in City Walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, there's a couple of suggestions other than Finnegan's. Yeah, there you go. Okay, question number seven, and this is our last one. Oh, good. Um, Luann asks, um, I'm wondering about the fastest routes from the two park entrances, entrances to Gringotts and Hagrid's. Have you ever done a video about this? I have not done a video on that, but we'll just address that situation right now. Okay. So... The two Harry Potter worlds, uh -huh. the main rides, you got Gringotts there in Diagon Alley, mm -hmm. and you got Hagrid's over in Hogsmeade. Mm -hmm. They're far apart. Now, I would say if the wait time for the Hogwarts Express is 30 minutes or less, just do that. Okay. Otherwise, you got to walk all the way out of Universal, mm -hmm. and then all the way down City Walk, and all the way back to Hogsmeade. That's true. That's a it's, big... It's a long walk. Yeah, it takes some time. It will. You're right. <laughs> so that's your only options is to walk it, right, or take a Hogwarts Express. But I mean, lately those wait times can be long for Hogwarts Express. Right, with social distancing. I did it the, uh, the other day when it was a 30 minute wait, and um, 
I probably got on the train in 20 minutes. Right. The lines always seem and look a little bit scarier being that mm. they're so stretched out, but it does go pretty quick. If it was, if the wait time was 45 minutes, I would probably walk. Plus, I always have the attitude in my head, oh, well, I'm getting exercise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. We're, that's that's enough. it for questions, right? We're yes. all done for today. That's it. We're done. All right. Uh, with uh, As always, guys. <laughs> don't miss the magic. Don't miss the fun. Thanks for watching Rick's Flicks. And now it's time to relax.